Okay, you're really gonna enjoy this video because I've got something really odd for you today. Let's unbox it and talk about the first really odd thing about this car stereo. And that's the name, Car Puride. Car Per ID? Car Pride? Carp Your Ride. And that strange name is just really the beginning of this really weird car stereo. In fact, when Car Pure Ride first reached out to me and asked me to review this, I told them that I didn't really want to review it. I didn't think anyone would ever buy such a weird car stereo. And they responded that it was actually their <laughs> best seller. If that's true, then there's something that I'm missing. So keep watching and we'll see if there actually is something that we're missing. When you crack open the box, you're gonna find a wide variety of various mounts and mounting brackets with a good solid assortment of cables and attachments. There's a, even a backup camera which is interesting and we'll talk a little bit more about that backup camera later. And it does come with a patch cable so you can connect it to the auxiliary input on your in-dash stereo. And of course the thing that struck me as odd at first is that this thing really isn't like any other car stereo out there. It's not an in-dash unit, it's a portable unit. And because of that it's missing pretty much every feature that you really should expect on a car stereo. For example, there are no speaker outputs but it does have a small speaker on the back. There are no RCA outputs, but it does have a line out on it instead. And instead of installing it in your dash, it's designed just to stick onto your windshield. No installation required. You just plug it into the cigarette lighter and <laughs> it works. And that's probably why this is Carp Your Ride's best seller. Let's hook it up over in the truck and go over all the functions and we'll talk about why you or someone you know might want to buy one of these. And installing this thing really is just as easy as sticking it to the windshield and plugging the thing in. It's got a big and bright screen and it has an excellent EQ section. Android audio works flawlessly, but that's not the best part. The best part is right here. It has an FM transmitter. So you just set a broadcast frequency here on your screen and then set your FM radio to that broadcast frequency and you can get your music and turn by turn directions through your existing car stereo. Okay, Google navigate to five star car stereo in Florida. All right, five-star car stereo, let's go. Five-star car stereo may be closed by the time you arrive. The only wire you have to use is the power wire. Now it does come with a backup camera and I'm not really sure why it comes with a backup camera. If you're gonna go through the trouble of running the wires for the backup camera, then you probably would opt for an in-dash unit since installing a backup camera is kind of a pain. And I was never able to get the backup camera to work. Once you start driving, it reminds me of one of those old school GPS units people would stick up on their dash. There is however one major glitch if you stop off the music, the FM transmitter will disconnect. Okay, I wanna see if I can get this to do it again on camera. I've got the radio up, I'm playing some YouTube approved music. I'm sitting at a red light. I'm gonna hit the play button and we'll get some music here. So we got music going through the FM broadcast, going out to the stereo in the car. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop the music and we're gonna see how long it takes for the FM transmit function to stop FM transmitting and how long will we get static. So, music on. Music stopped, let's see how long it takes before we get static. I think this is the biggest problem with the unit. The other minor nit, it doesn't really connect automatically to Android Auto or the FM broadcast. Every time you fire up your vehicle, you have to go into the FM broadcast section and turn that on. And if you think about the target customer for a device like this, it's probably someone that's not very tech savvy. And these little minor nits become major annoyances to someone who doesn't want to go through a lot of trouble setting up a device every time they get in the car. 
car, but it still could be a useful device depending on your situation. Me, for example, I'm gonna keep this one handy because every now and then I've gotta take a work trip in a company car, and these are fleet cars that are really stripped down to the bare minimum. None of those have Android Auto in them. So with this, I can easily have access to Waze or Google Maps, my podcast, and my music without having to fumble with my phone while I'm driving. This also might be an excellent gift for a parent that might not be very tech savvy. You know, <laughs> boomers. <laughs> or it might be handy for a classic car owner that wants Apple CarPlay and doesn't want to modify their dash. Or really anybody that doesn't want to fool with the trouble of installing a car stereo, but still would like to have the conveniences of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, along with a larger screen. What about the sound quality? Before I tell you about the sound quality, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons, with a special thanks to the $25 patrons, Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, Stereo Lab LLC, and Vava. Well, it sounds good enough for its intended use and its intended customer. The kind of person who would prefer one of these over a high quality head unit really isn't interested in sound quality. Now my typical audience values sound quality a bit more. If you're one of my usual viewers, you're probably going to pass over this, but it would probably be a great gift for your mother-in-law. Now, in addition to those glitches I mentioned earlier, the other downside is that it's only slightly better than getting a really big telephone with a big screen and then a cheap phone mount. And of course, the main advantage of this car poo ride portable head unit is that it's just dead simple. It's portable and it works just fine right out of the box. I didn't even need to look at the instructions that came with it. My recommendation is that if you need something easy and portable, it may be worth a look. If you're looking for a high-end touchscreen radio, then this is a hard pass. And of course, if you're looking for something like that, check out these videos right here. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I will see you on the next adventure.